Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We got the planter in the shop. Time to start getting it ready to go to the field. We're probably gonna start planting here in the next, oh, month or so. So, it's time to get going. Every year about this time, we bring it in and we check over all the uh, wear parts, see if anything needs replaced, take care of any maintenance, um, grease it, oil the chains, all that good stuff, check the tires. This year we got kind of a little bit bigger project to do to it. Not as big as that liquid system we did last year, but this has been something we've been wanting to do for a couple years and finally decided to pull the trigger on it. So we're going to be replacing these. These are bottom parallel arms. I'll show you those. They go right here on the row unit. This is what the row unit rides on and it floats up and down and stays parallel. That's why they're called parallel arms. Uh, the top ones, we replaced the, well, we, we didn't really replace, we bored these out, reamed them out, I should say, and put these hardened bushings in. So the top is tight. We didn't do that to the bottom because we thought it would be a really big job to do because this is all one piece. The top are two separate pieces. So the issue is, this being cast, there's a hardened bushing in here that it rides on, and the bushing wears out the cast, and then it gets really sloppy, and then you get a lot of this going on with your row unit and that's not good for uniformity when you're planting so the new ones we got have a hardened bushing pressed into the cast and then there's another bushing that the bolt goes through and it rides on that it's gonna be a huge upgrade I'll uh, I'll show you guys one of these how loose it is see all that movement there in the bottom the tops pretty tight if you see but Watch right there, got a lot of movement. So we're gonna try and fix that. But before I do that, I need to get all the rest of the monitors and stuff in the cab and I'm not sure if I'll hook everything else back up yet, but I'm gonna get some monitors in there and uh, start on that. Cause to be honest, I don't really feel like doing this yet. It's kind of early in the morning. So we'll start with the easy job, move on to the more difficult stuff. Go out here into this tractor grab the monitor out of it because that's the one we're going to use in the planter tractor so this is a john deere g5 display they just came out with these we decided to buy one because we're going to be doing some upgrades to our guidance system we're hoping to go to implement guidance on our strip till bar and i guess these newer displays just better processor they work better for that type of stuff so we decided to upgrade into one of these I put it in this tractor because I was spreading some fertilizer and I wanted to learn how to use it because it's completely different than the 2630s we've been using so kind of got a feel for it I'm gonna take it out put it in that tractor these are the old 2630s it's also a bigger screen faster processor better touch screen uh, so far I, I really like it I only use it a little bit but it was really intuitive, really easy to learn. A lot easier than this, I would say. Uh, just a little bit of a learning curve, getting used to how that runs compared to this, but so far I like it. All right, come off of there. See, this is the problem I have with these display brackets. They're so tight when you first start using them. I can't even get it to slide. You're supposed to slide it up and then it twists out, but there we go. All right, come on. What in the world? There. All right. Not that. I'm going to take this old crusty display out of here and put that back in my tractor. Next, I need to grab the 2020, this one. This is the planner monitor. We had some issues with our 2020 last year. This is actually a new one that we bought in season because our old one quit working. Um, and we didn't ever get to use it because we bought this one used and the screen was locked up on it. So we got a loaner from our precision dealer and got by for the rest of the season. And we never actually got to plug this one in. So I want to make sure this one works 
before we do anything because if it needs some work we still got another month or so to figure out what's going on with it so this one's pretty easy got a uh, ball mount that screws on to the back of this if I don't cross thread it I think I got everything plugged in I'm gonna see and that's loud I'm gonna see if it turns on that's good. I think I'm missing something for this. There should be a power. Uh, that guy. This is the section control. It controls our uh, air clutches on the planner. Um, I forget what they call this, but they automatically turn off two rows at a time, and this is what controls that. Row flow, that's what it's called. What it's called. Fancy new screens powering up. Well, that's good. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Home. Okay, it's not going to detect anything because I don't have the planner hooked up to the tractor yet. So, I just want to make sure it turned on. Um, no. I just want to make sure it turned on and the screen worked because that was the issue we had with it last year. I'm going to keep this key on and let that boot up all the way so it can uh, know what's going on. Oh, hey, that lit up. Maybe that is. Hmm. Okay, I guess that's fine. Anyways, what next? Oh, here we go. Accept. Okay. 8430, it knows what tractor it's in. Should be fine. Sweet. Good to go. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm not gonna hook up all the uh, hydraulic hoses just yet, but I'm gonna hook up this ISO bus plug. That will be for our rate controller for the liquid system. I'm also gonna hook up, what's this? Oh, that's a implement switch. What's this? I think this is the Raven. Oh, come back here. Yep, that's the Raven controller. What else do we got here? We should have this guy. Oh, that's right, I gotta pull some harnesses out of the cab. Should be two cables that we use for the precision. Where's the other one at? Okay, that one's already hooked up. This one should be for the row flow. I'll get that hooked up. Uh, maybe something else. Let me go find that one in the cab here. stuff back here. Is it you? Yeah, I think so. Got that stuff plugged in. Um, RFM orientation does not match the selected configuration. Performance will be degraded. Yes. Um, I gotta look at that. So, we're going to skip that for now. Looks like everything's on. Row flow's working. Air force is disabled because the air compressor's not running. Everything's good, I guess. Um, systems. Air force. How do I enable it? Uh, I guess it's... I guess it's fine. I think that'll enable itself once I start up. This all looks fine, so I guess that's good. Now I'll move on to those uh, parallel arms. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these boxes off because I think I'm gonna have to hold this up with a forklift or something, probably with a chain from the top because once I take these off, that's gonna flop down onto the ground and it's gonna be hard to maneuver. So I think if I take these off, I can hold it up with the forklift, pop these bolts out, and then put the new one in, take the forklift off, go on to the next one. So let's get these boxes off. Pretty simple, just uh, pop the latch, they flip up. So you guys can... And then we gotta pull the back bolts off. Come on, you. There you go. Easy as that. All right, now that 
I got the boxes off, I can kind of see what's going on here. Oh, I'm trying to figure out how I want to pick this up. So I need to support it in the front and or the front and the back. So I'm probably gonna have to figure out how to get a chain around here somewhere. And then maybe here. This looks fairly strong. I think I can figure it out. Got all my tools actually. Oh, that one's not sitting on the ground. I could just take this one apart and let it sit on the ground and see if we can muscle this one around because it's pretty close to the ground anyway. And if we have to, we can get the forklift in. I think that's what I'm going to do. Start by taking these four bolts out. And then there is a, actually I'll probably do this one first. This is the bolt for the air downforce system. Um, this is air force. It pushes down and it also will lift up so we can maintain a consistent down pressure. But I'll take that out and see what happens from there. Oh, that's really tight. Holy cow. A lot. Probably not going to be able to use the impact on all these, so I got a ratchet too. All these bolts are painted so they don't like to let go of the wrenches. Those ones I can't get the impact in so I'm going to have to do that the old fashioned way. Well this bolt I'm going to have to do the real old fashioned way and use two wrenches because I can't get the ratchet on here and I can't get the ratchet on there so I'm just going to have to fight this one. I could raise this up and get this out of the way but then this wouldn't be sitting on the floor and then I would fight it so we'll just see if we can get it apart like this. really raining. I need a ratchet wrench is what I need. I think I have one in my white truck but it's not here at the moment so we'll get it figured out. It'll be okay. Got all the nuts. I'm going to start pulling the bolts and see what happens here. Where's my impact? Oh shoot. I don't have. There we go. Socket. Not the right color socket, but it'll do. There's that one. I'm gonna need both my hands, so you guys can just sit here for a minute. Anticipating. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have the forklift. I gotta hold this up. So I don't have any small chains and using a big chain is going to be a pain. So I think I'm going to try and use these ratchet straps and just put one here, one here, and then if I need to adjust it, I can always just hit the ratchets a couple times, go up and try and get stuff lined up. So see what happens now. And there's that one. I should just have one more in the front to grab. There we go. That worked great. The old one. Oh. I'll grab one of these bushings so I can show you the deal. See, the bushings actually wear too. I don't know if you can see that, but you put this in the hole, it's got a lot of slop in there. I don't know if you can see that either, but little tiny bit of slop here is a lot back there at the closing wheel so that's why we're changing these out not sure what all these come with i haven't dug into it yet looks like we got bolts and bushings i'm assuming each one of these is for one row um yep there's some washers here i'll have to figure out where those go and uh 
the bushing bolt washer nut shouldn't be too complicated. Well, we got long bolts and short bolts, so I'm gonna call the guy that we bought them from and see if he knows what goes where. Well, I guess there's shorter bushings and taller bushings too, so maybe that'll tell me what's what. Made a phone call. Long bolts go to the back, short bolts go to the front, washer to the bolt head. Should be pretty easy. Let's see, can you guys see me from down there? Just let me know if you can't see me. It's gonna be the easiest here. I'm gonna have to regroup because these bolt holes are not lining up and this doesn't want to move so I think I need to hold it differently see what happens well I raised it up and lowered it and did all kinds of stuff and I was able to get three out of the four bolts I still got to get this one so I'm thinking if I just take the forklift out and set it down I should be able to wiggle it around in theory get that last bolt in our work see what it looks like oh yeah that is so much better there is no movement whatsoever awesome now I just got to put this bolt back in wherever I put that at and we should be good to go on that row here it is this is not a one-man job I'm learning that so I'm probably just gonna have to wait till dad gets back home tomorrow but after I get these tightened up I will have gotten two rows done so we're an eighth of the way done, so I tried. Well, it's the next day and Dad's back from vacation and he's been helping me get these arms back together. We kind of got a system figured out. We got this back row all the way done and then we moved over here, so it took us a little bit to get that first one, but once we kind of figured out a system, they're not going too bad. Definitely works a lot better with two people, so. We got the forklift rigged up here. We can pick up two at a time, the way these forks are laid out. We figured out if you pick it up right here, it balances pretty e easy. You can pick it up, pop the bolts out, and then put the new one in and use the floor jack to pick the front of it up to get it in there.
get that down a little bit. See, it's not too bad once we figure it out. All right, it's the next day again. Dad had to run and get a few parts this morning. Um, a couple of, well, I guess one of the bolt kits had the wrong size bushing in it. So we got an extra bolt kit and we stripped a couple of the bolts. So needed some extra bolts anyway. Also got some new arms for the tops in a couple places. I'll show you those. Um, it'll all make sense here in a minute. We got some of the top arms with that bushing in there. What we got going on is right here where this drive shaft comes down, there's an idler that the top bolt holds. So when we did this to our top arms a few years ago, we weren't able to do that up here because we need that long carriage bolt. So we just left this the way it is and we figured there's only four of these so we bought the arms with those pressed in bushings to swap those out so that's what we're doing here we only got one more of the bottom parallel arms on this row unit left and then that job will be done top arms and what you had to do is ring these holes out bigger and then drill this hole so this bushing comes in here and it can't turn and then there's a shouldered bolt so you had to drill out the actual row unit and the bracket at the top and then this piece goes on here threads onto the bolt and it fits nice and tight. It was a pretty big job, but it was a lot cheaper than buying new arms at the time. I think it was like half the price. It's a it's a good unit, but or it's it's a good fix, but it's a lot of work. And we didn't really know how we could get these bottom arms in a drill press to be able to ream these out straight. We don't have a milling machine or anything, so that's why we decided to spend the money on the bottom arms instead of drilling them out. Well, we got that job done got that last arm on got everything bolted back up I think we got all the bolts tight might uh, give that a once over and make sure everything's tight before we pull it out that's probably gonna wrap it up for this video we uh please call me um, that was the main thing we want to do to the planner the next thing we want to do is replace these chains we're gonna measure our openers make sure they're not beyond spec or they're still in spec might have to replace those if they're out and that's about it grease it check the tires and should be ready to go so that's going to do it for this video thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one